Hi guys and welcome back. Today we're going to be solving the Day 14 project. This project is very similar to the Day 12 project that we worked on a couple of days ago. So what I've got in front of me right now is the code that we ended up with at the end of Day 12. For Day 14 though, we're going to be adding a couple of pieces of functionality as well as the ability to save to a file and read from a file so that when the program ends, all the reading lists are not lost from our users. So here we've got the code from day 12. We're going to just go over it real quick so that in case you've forgotten, uh, we've got a reading list uh, list, which is what holds our users books that they want to read. Then we've got the menu prompt that asks the user whether they want to add a book, list books or exit the application. And then we ask the user to actually select one of the options in here and we use those down in this loop that runs for as long as they don't enter Q. If they entered A, we run the add book function and if they enter L to list the books, then we check if the reading list variable is empty and if it isn't, then we display their books and if it is, we show that their reading list is empty. Otherwise, if it wasn't A or L, we show that that is an invalid option and we ask the users again for a new input. Now, for the add book, we uh, get the user information regarding title, author, and year of publication, and we append to the reading list a dictionary with that information. For show books, we print empty lines at the start and at the end, then we go through the reading list variable, and we get the values for title, author, and year, and we print those out. So this was what we ended up with. Now we're going to start off by saving to a file. So here the add book function you can see appends to the reading list variable. We're going to change that so that it writes to a file instead. So we're going to write this data to a file. The first step is going to be to go over to files and actually create a file that I'm going to call books.csv. And I'm just going to put some fake data in here to begin with and to give you an idea of what we're going to be working with. So I'm going to put this data in there, 1Q84 by Haruki Murakami, uh, published in 2009, and The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde in 1890. And so you can see that these have commas in between the different values, and there is a new line character at the end of each line, bringing us to the next line. Let's go back to main.py, and what we're going to do in our add book function is we're going to add to that file our new book. So we're going to get rid of this reading list.append and we're going to do uh, open the file first of all. I'm going to use a context manager for this. If you're not familiar with context managers, do read the blog post for today. Um, and we're going to do with open and we're going to open the books.csv file in append mode. And we're going to call it reading list inside this context manager. Here we can do reading list.write and we're going to write our book. So remember, we want to put all our book details, title, author, and year, as comma-separated values. So we'll do title, author, and year. Now, at the end, we want the new line character so that when we do write another book, it will appear in the following line and not in the same line. With this, we've changed our add book function so that it writes to the file now instead of keeping data in the reading list. Doing this, of course, means that show books is no longer going to be able to show anything because there's going to be nothing in the reading list. So in here, we also have to go ahead and read from the file. And so that's what we're going to do next. We can do with open of books.csv, this time in reading mode as reading list. And then we can go ahead and iterate over the reading list, which gives us one variable, the book variable, per line of text. And so here, book will be the first line of text in the file. Therefore, doing this no longer makes any sense because book.values accesses something that should be part of a dictionary. But here we've got a string instead. So we're going to get rid of this. And instead, we have to access the different parts of our string. We're going to do that by using split. And so we can do title, author, and year is equal to book.strip.split on the comma. That is going to get rid of the new line character at the end, and then it's going to split on the comma, giving us three different values. Remember that we are going to have a value here, another one here, and a third one there. So that's going to give us the three values, and we're going to assign them to different variables. Doing this, though, means that we no longer need the reading list variable up here, right? Because this function uh, creates its own reading list variable and writes to it. That's the file. 
and this one down here also does the same thing. So we can get rid of it because now all our data store is happening in the file and no longer in that variable. However, if we do that, we can no longer do this, right? Because this uses reading list, but reading list is defined inside each function. So we no longer have access to that variable here. What we're going to do, therefore, is we're going to create a third function that gives us the books and then we will create a separate function to display the books. So we'll create a function that finds the books in the database and retrieves them all. And then this function here will just be in charge of displaying the books that we have already found in this other function. I'm going to call this function get all books. And what it's going to do is it's going to create an empty list of books. Then it's going to open the reading list for reading. Then it's going to go through it line by line. And then it's going to fetch the different values from the line like we did before. But now instead of printing things out, it's going to go ahead and create a dictionary with this information and put it into the books variable. So we will do books.append and we will put our dictionary in here. The dictionary is going to just have the title, the author and the year. Now, after the loop and once we've closed the books.csv uh, file, we're going to return books in here. Now, this function, get all books, is in charge of reading the file and giving us the books in it. Therefore, we can go down here into if reading list here and we can actually create a reading list variable that is equal to get all books. Then we can use that variable to check whether there are any books. And if there are, we can call show books. If there are no books, we can print that the reading list is empty. Naturally, we've got a massive uh, performance problem here. Well, it's not really a massive performance problem, but it is a bit of code duplication, I guess, as well, in that this function, get all books, is opening and reading the file. And this function, show books, is also opening and reading the file. So we probably don't have to do that because they're going to be finding the same stuff, especially when they're called one directly after the other. And so instead, what we can do is we can make show books take in an argument or have a parameter. And now we can pass in the reading list to the function. So we'll say reading list here, pass it into the show books function as an argument. That means that the books parameter will take the value of the return of get all books. So reading list will be equal to that. We pass it in here. Books therefore equals calling get all books. Now we no longer need to open that. And instead, what we can do is we can iterate over the books that we get in the parameter there. And now we can print that out. Note that book is going to be a dictionary because that is what we append in the get all books function. And so therefore, we no longer do that. We can now do book dot values just as we had before. So really no change. The changes to this code have uh, taken us through a bit of a journey. And the end result is that we create another function to access the data store. And we keep this function just for printing stuff out. This type of separation between, you know, user input and output and accessing a data store or processing data is pretty common. And it's a good way to keep your functions a bit separate. And it's a good way to keep your functions a bit separate. Now we can tackle the final problem, which is searching for books. The approach we're going to take for the search functionality is that we're going to consider a book as matching if the user's search term is a substring of the book's title. For example, let's go back to our CSV file and I'll tell you what I mean. Let's say that the user enters Dorian Gray. Then that would match this book because Dorian Gray, what the user entered, is a substring of the title, the picture of Dorian Gray. And so that's what we're going to be checking out in our finding books. So let's create that function, find books. And what this is going to do is once again, it's going to go ahead and load the reading list. You can do this in two ways. You can pass in an argument like we did for the show books function, or you can load the reading list in here. Earlier on, we had to do this in order to create the if statement. We needed access to the books outside of the function. And so that's why we created a variable and passed in an argument. Here, we're just going to load the books inside the function because we don't need to use the reading list outside of the function. 
So we'll do reading underscore list is equal to get all books. Now, something I forgot to do was to adjust the menu and the if statements down below to allow the user to find books. So let's do that just now. We're going to add a new option here for S to search for a book. And down in the menu, we're going to add another elif for the selected option equal to S. And what it's going to do is it's going to call the find books function. All right, let's go back to our find books function and notice that we've already loaded the reading list in here. Now we're going to find the matching books that match the search term the user is going to enter. So the search term we're going to ask in here, please enter a book title to search for. And then they're going to enter something. We're going to strip it of any uh, unwanted white spaces and we're going to turn it into lowercase. I'm just going to move this a bit to the side again so that you can see this in one line. Then we're going to go through the reading list. So we'll say for book in reading list. And we're going to check whether the search term is a part of the book title. And we're going to do that with the in keyword as well. So we'll do if search term in book title. Notice that the search term was converted to lowercase earlier on. So we should convert the book title to lowercase here as well so that we're comparing lowercase to lowercase. So we'll do dot lower. And then if it matches, we're going to add it to the matching books list. So we'll do matching books or append book. Then at the end, outside the loop, we will return matching books. Notice that this find books function does not print anything out. And that's because it only is concerned with getting the books out and seeing whether they match. Now we have to pass in the result of find books to our show books function. Notice that show books takes in any arbitrary number of books in a list and prints them out. So therefore we can find the matching books and then pass them into that. Let's do that over down here in our menu. Notice that earlier we were calling find books. Now we're going to find only the or put them into a variable matching books. And then we're going to say if matching books, then we will do show books of matching books. That is going to pass in the books list that we generate in this function over to the show books function and they're going to get printed out. Now, something else we can do is something similar to what we had earlier on with the list books. We can do if there are no matching books, then we will print something like, sorry, no books found matching that search term or something like that. And with that, we're pretty much done. This was the regular version of the project. And you can see that we have added the storage and retrieval from a file. And we've also adding the searching for books. Hopefully you've been able to follow along just fine. Do check out the REPL for this project where I am right now, which will be linked down below in the description of this video, as well as our text walkthrough over in the blog, which is also linked in the description of this video. And if you want, you can also tackle the harder version of this project that adds a couple more pieces of functionality. That is also linked below in the description of this video. Everything is linked down there. So just go and check that out and see if you can find any links you find interesting down there. All right, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for joining me for this project. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you tomorrow for day 15.